Welcome to the podcast. Today, my guest is Mark Gardner. So thanks for coming on today, Mark. No worries at all, Mark. Great. So I'll give a bit of an introduction and Mark, do feel free to jump in if I get anything wrong. But, uh, <laughs> I've been so, called worse. Well, you couldn't say anything that other people hadn't said worse about me. So go, okay. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, so just firstly about this podcast, typically I interview therapists about their healing work. And I've also done reviews of spiritual movies where I differentiate between what, in my opinion, uh, as a past life therapist and a part and a spirit release therapist, which is what I do, I think, is this fact or is this cinematic fiction? Well, today's a treat because we've got a healer who's had a movie based on his work, so we can ask for his perspective directly. So Mark is known as the accidental exorcist. And exorcism is a terminology I don't use as a spirit releasement therapist, uh, but we're both healers. We use different terms, different techniques. We have different client types a lot, but we find a lot of similarities. In fact, we've done another podcast where we talk as two healers which is particularly interesting if you're a healer or a student of therapy. So do check that, that one out. This podcast, I wanted to do it. I have a second one with Mark because uh, I wanted to talk to a more general audience and for one who has a real interest in movies. And so we can really go deep into Mark's world and I can interview him and, and, and shut up a bit more. So <laughs> we can <laughs> so we can hear about Mark's work. Uh, uh, and uh, it was presented in a movie called The Possessed. So that was made in Australia and came out 2021 in Australia. 2022 and the rest of the world if you're looking for it so mark what was your involvement in that you're a producer a consultant a writer how much input did you have well i had a fair bit of input into the idea of it um i, I had a television producer um and film producer um, by the name of chris sum christopher lee sum and he did bore and a couple of other films australian guy lives up in nambal uh, sorry lives up in uh, budrum now comes from nambal um a really nice guy lovely man they came to debunk me uh, up to my my home, and they bought a, a, a TV jock, uh, sorry, radio jock from the local radio station, and their idea was to to take the piss out of me, and debunk me, and, uh, and do what they did. But I I don't worry about those sort of things. I just do what I do. Um, so the big fellow, the, the the DJ, I won't mention his name. He might not want. I haven't got his permission to mention his name. But anyway, okay. he was lying on the on the uh, on the on the table. And uh, the director was sitting on a chair next to the to the uh, table, and I started my work. And uh, as you know, the stuff comes through me, so it's quite, it's quite, it's quite shocking and it's quite frightening. And uh, I, I, you can see the director when he showed me the, the playback of what happened. He's going <laughs> like this. <laughs> now he was actually had a glass of water under the table, and he was going to splash it on me and go, "Get behind me, Satan!" You know, and all this sort of stuff. He was going to like holy water. And uh, the jock said, he goes, he said, mate, as soon as you started waving your hands around, he said, I felt like a car had parked on my chest. He said, there's no way I was going to take the piss out of you because I felt, no, this is on, it's real, it's going. So uh, that director, and I spoke about it, and he said, well, you, I said, well, what do, you, do you think I'm bullshitting or do you think I'm real? He said, no, I think you're very, very much real. He said, uh, have you thought about making it? And I said, well, I wanted to do a movie about this stuff. Um, so, so I gave him a, about 55 pages that I'd given him uh, that I'd done myself about what had actually happened. Um, by the time his script writers got to it and he got to it, and it was the only stuff that was, that was actually really, really mine was the dialogue and some of those scenes that where I was getting rid of the entities and all that sort of stuff. It was, but it's you know he's a he's a film director, and because he's an FX, particularly a practicals effects guy. A lot of the demons that that were unseen became these horned things, and you know, and that's fair enough. I mean, that's that's movie making. You know, he was creating that thing that he believed would 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 sell as a movie. Um, it missed it in terms of to, for me, very hard to portray the real fear when you yeah. have something on you that is so. I'm literally walking around possessed, right? This is what happens. I take on those energies. I take them off people and I take them on and then I get rid of them. Now I do. I'm, I'm more so I really take them on and get rid of them on the spot. They go and I move them through. But they come through me and they express themselves and they go. So the movie misses that aspect of it. it but it's very hard to express the, 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 the pure fear that can be generated through these things. Yeah. You know I mean? Okay. I'll, really? I, I do want, I will dig right. in and ask about the specifics kind of line by line or scene by scene, but you know, that's a great uh, introduction. And, you know, another way of looking at it is that, you know, movies has, have genres 
And so, you know, he's he's out there, you know, you've got, it's a, he's out to make a quote unquote horror movie. So, yep. you know, it's based, it, it's not, it's not really a documentary yet at the end of it, it's interesting. So they, they did have real experience because at the end of the movie and as the credits were rolling, there are scenes of real life of you uh, uh, doing the clearings. Well, that was actually that clearing I was talking about. I see. Okay, and, uh, right. Uh, the jock, jock actually said, he said, well, you were speaking in Norwegian. I, Did you speak Norwegian? I said, no, I don't speak Norwegian. But he has Norwegian um, in his family. He, his heritage is Norwegian. So uh, that's why we could pick up that it was Norwegian. Um, yeah. That was that particular clearing. Okay, well, that makes sense. So they're there with a the camera. Okay, yeah. so, right. And so they were there to make a funny debunking documentary, but then ended up, you know, thinking, all right, there's something real here. So that's, that's the big question that I wanted to ask really today. And so the beginning of the movie says we're about to witness an incredible story from Jacob about some of his early clearings. Then it says clearings have been dramatized with theatrical ev- effect. Yeah, somewhat. So then, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, then, so then we got some big questions. And to me, there are two sets of questions. There's a simple question like, no, is, is this bullshit anyway? Does it really exist? And that's kind of the question they came to you yeah. with initially. So just as a quick answer for people that don't know too much about this, I mean, is this all just fiction? Or is is this really real? And like, do dark entities really exist? Oh, dark entities really exist. It's 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 not seen in the performance. I mean, Hollywood's created these demonic influences from from ancient texts and you know people's I- idea of what it might, what a demon might look like. Um, yeah. When you've actually experienced that, as you have, it, it's it's it comes in very many different manifestations, and sometimes you, your own thoughts and your own creation can can give you some of those visuals. Because your your mind just uh, cannot believe what's what's happened, so you go oh, 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 it's this or it's that. But yes, they absolutely dark force entities exist. Okay, look, that's a great point as well. Your mind can't really believe it, but once you've experienced something, then it's a different thing. So the, these guys who showed up didn't believe it; they had an experience. Then the things change. People might also think, well, you know, is it really literally a dark force entity? Couldn't it just be a repressed emotion? Could it be? you know, a, another form of rage or fear? Is it some sort of form of psychotic breakdown? Is this a subconscious metaphor that people are seeing internally and we're interpreting it as being a dark force entity? What would you say to people who have those kind of questions? I think, I think that's a, uh, I think for a millennial, we've been, we've been looking, millennium, sorry, not a millennial, it's one yeah. of those guys. Anyway, thank, for, thank for a millennium, they've been actually asking this question about what, what are they? What are they actually? And they could well be. A negative. I mean, the ancient, ancient, Asian symbol, the yin yang symbol, where there's a white and a and a black teardrop, and they're exactly equal. And then, to my mind, it's like, well, well, maybe that's something that's been there all along. Maybe it's something that we've. It's part of us that needs to be challenged. But then you can walk into the idea that well, there's physical parasites in your gut. Why wouldn't there be etheric electric parasites that exist? inside this space as well and we only know i mean look at the light spectrum it's like this much of what we can see but the real Mm. light spectrum's out like this are we just not understanding we we just don't know what we don't know but if there's fear involved um you 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 know you've got to address that aspect oh why is it so scary why is this this thing so frightening um to, to, to to everybody um, even once you get used to them, they can still be a bit scary because they get once they get a little bit of a it's like they get a bit of a feed or a taste. They'll just yeah. keep coming at you like this, and yeah. then the fear grows, and then they grow, and then who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I don't know the answer. I don't think anyone else does. That's a great point. And so sometimes people bring that up as well. You know, you haven't quite thought of that, and say, like, yeah, no, we have thought of it, <laughs> but yeah. uh, and it's also in my mind I wouldn't say, well, that's really a religious point of view. So or that sort of an amateur point of view. But, you know, from my field, as we call it spirit releasement therapy, this has been developed by psychiatrists and psychologists. So the kind of protocols yeah. I'm following, and uh, it's not just our oh, world religions or ancient yeah. knowledge that we've lost. It is literally, over the last hundred years, there is a lot of anecdotal evidence from scientific uh, professionals. So now that's my contribution. Could they really exist? I agree, it could be all of these things, but as an anecdotal Thing. based on my experience yes we've thought of it but the evidence points to it's likely that it could literally be the case and that's sort of backed up by uh, people smarter than me who who, who know as well uh, and i've sort of followed in some of their footsteps and so 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 we've established we think dark entities can literally exist most likely 
Uh, and then, you know, are you literally, uh, do you really do this work? Do you really work with entities? Yes. I, 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 oh, look, I mean, it's, add that to the last answer because it's very similar to the idea of that I really don't know, deeply don't know. I know I felt the greatest kind of love there is um, in, in many, many ways. I felt the greatest darkness and fear in many, many, many ways. So, so you know, when I when I meet something in somebody that is that gives me a great amount of fear, um, it it is a detachment, and it, because it comes through me, there is a movement, an emotion between that person and me, and mm -hmm. the thing that comes through can talk in a language, and it can yell, and it can punch me, and it's all, which is quite funny to watch. Uh, my ex wife would have loved that. Anyway, uh, you, you tend to get at the idea that there's. There is way more to this. And I think religion has kind of put put that, and I'm not saying against any religion, it's just that boxing the idea of what that might be limits people's thinking about what it might, what it might not be, right? right? And takes them away from, from, from being able to understand it fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, a similar, very similar answer for me as well, which is, you know, the, there is so much evidence and so much experience where, uh, it would just be any other uh, answer doesn't really seem to make sense because how right. do people who have like that are people faking it? Are you faking it for notoriety? Are they faking it too because they read it in a book and and maybe they're faking it, but you don't realize they're faking it. So you're you are honest, but you're being tricked by somebody else. And just the, the amount of people who from different backgrounds with little to no knowledge who have just exactly the same experiences and follow. No, it'll, it'll just it'll be extremely difficult to fake and, uh, and you, but, you know uh, exactly that mean it couldn't really be done so the only real rational explanation is one which is irrational well it's there are there are also you got to kind of get the idea that that there are scientific when they haven't ever gone into this scientifically which i would love to that's one of the things like you know polygraph tests and eeg tests and you know a polygraph test during an exorcism all those sort of what's the brain function what's happening electronically in the body i'd love to delve into that to try and get some science to it because mm. the, the problem with what most people think is there's either religion or there's science mm. right and, they, and that's their interpretation of what those things might be but there's a whole complexity of them joining together um and, and also there's a quantum science area that, that that's not even, that's really where the answers lie <laughs> it's in that mm. movement of the quantum world um but you know again religion and science has been trolled by by influences that uh, self have vested interests yeah. in us believing or anyone believing that this is what that is be 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 afraid and we're the only ones that can actually make you feel unafraid right when in when in actual fact um understanding it is is that's what consciousness is understanding those things right yeah and i hope yeah, that for everybody right. Yeah, I want to dig into that uh, later on, but let's come back to this part about just like, so we've established, you know, we think they exist. We, we're really working with them. We're not making it up. Uh, it's not a joke. It's not a game. Then we look at, do they really exist cinematically? So uh, do, we, do entities exist in the way shown in the movie? So do they come out as smoke? Do they come out as a demon with horns that kind of looks like flesh and blood? Or is it imagination of a, a, an internal representation? So in the movie, it looks like they come out as smoke and stand there in the room with you as a physical being. Again, that was um, you know creative license by director. You got to understand yeah. that the, the movies are only they're an entertainment thing, yeah. and like any and it's a product and it's a business. And these guys they look at well, what do people like the most? And they research well, they like things with horns. You know, they like to have the shit scared out of them. Um, you know, so so those things are designed and made around what the what the audience wants, right? The so reality, what, yeah. Well, what, what is really yeah what what's the reality do, so you're not do you have a visual representation of entities that as you work with them very much so around the the sometimes i see what they see um yeah. and sometimes i get that that kind of the dark the, the red and yellow orangey yellow eyes and i it, it's and again my brain is going well what the hell is that blob of black fear sitting in front of you yeah and remembering that they come through me so when i when i see I see, like, for I could, I could feel a, a feel. It's more feeling for me. I feel something over there. There's something wrong with that person, and 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 I can go into, a, particularly in a pub or a pokey room or some place where there's a lot of, where there's a lot of guilt about what they're doing, or there's 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 beings in there that have died and gone back to the place they last remember they enjoyed the most, getting pissed. Um, you know, and they live in, and they seem to live. Some of these guys live in those places. 
and I can yeah. feel their energy and I can feel people with those energies on them. And yeah. so it's, for me, it's more an absorption of the fear. And, and, and they, it's, it's almost like a, it's like I've gone into a radio, radioactive room, highly radioactive. All of a sudden I'm feeling this vibe. That's like, well, something's not, I can't see it. I can't touch it. There's no tactile, but my God, I'm feeling this thing. There's something wrong. But, right? Okay. That, well, this is really interesting. So I think that's one thing people can understand that movies are a visual medium. And, uh, but the reality is for you, it's much more of a kinesthetic experience than a visual experience. And, yeah. and for me, my, for my, my clients might have some sort of visual representation, but if they do, it's often pretty ha hazy. And for me, it's really an auditory experience. So I don't see or feel it, but I do talk with them at length. So yeah. movies are visual, I'm auditory or kinesthetic, but it's so yeah. it just, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. But I think we're, then, all, we're all different in our interpretations of it and, and our life, the things that we did leading up to this part of our lives, Yeah, uh, some examples or some um, of what we actually experience around this thing. Uh, yeah. I only have a minimal religious background. I didn't believe in any of this stuff. That was, that's how difficult it was for me to get plotted into it. Was I, I didn't believe any of it. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in any of it. Yeah. So for me, it was quite a shock for it to actually exist. And, uh, yeah. and I've had a lot of other people that I've worked on that have got that realisation as well because it's like, oh, shit. I used yeah. to take the piss out of me and I'd, I'd do a clearing on them or one of their family and it's like, oh, my God, there's a whole something else going on here now. Yeah. So let's uh, just still on the uh, just the, the, the basic, you know, is it true or not? Uh, and so if people think there's a visual demon with horn horns in the room and then there can be a fear and they might think, well, you know, can it manifest physically? Can it punch me? And you'd even mentioned something about some sort of physical violence. So in terms of fear, like what kind of physical threat can people feel under? And what's your interpretation of it? Do you feel that they can punch in some way or well, you know, physically attack you? Yes, I, I believe there's a physical matter in space and time. And this is where I think the poltergeists, you know, there's a whole history of these things that go in that there are, there are you know, earthbound beings and there's, there's you know, there's the, there's the um, you know, the, the, the really evil, um, you know, there's these guys and there's, a, there's the ones that never carried a body before. And there's, I've heard all the stuff. I've had, had my bed move. I've woken up with bruises. It's easy when I'm in, in dealing with someone who's got a very powerful uh, entity on them. Um, when they take control of me and my body, I've got a lot better at it. But when it wasn't any good, I come up with a few black eyes and a twisted neck and a, some sore ribs and some just some body movement that just wasn't natural and uh, quite painful. Um, so, yeah, they can punch me in the face like that. But I've also gone into houses where there was um, this this couple up in uh, Mullaney had uh, they they wake up in the morning and there was pebbles all over their <laughs> over all of their floor. Um, and it was just like you did you wouldn't have time to put that many pebbles on a floor when the whole floor was covered in pebbles in the morning and banging on the wall that was really significant. Um, so there were physical manifestations of those things. I don't yeah. I doubt very much without using a body that these yeah. things could hurt you. I think the, the the chances of that, I haven't seen it myself other than doing it to myself and movement of various things, right? Attacks on me personally have been very limited and only because they come through me and they are me for that moment, right? So I'm, I'm because I had to go through that experience to understand how to actually stop them from doing that, mm. and, that and that all comes down to my own self-control, my own sovereignty, not, 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 not me going, you know, <laughs> any other thing than me taking control of me. Right, I yeah. doubt very much that they can do the physical things that you see on some of these movies, but people love to see that stuff. Again, it's entertainment. Well, I'm glad you said that. As you were starting to talk, I thought, "Wow, we're uh, it's you, you maybe you're going down a, a bit of a different way." But you know, so for me, that is pretty much my impression that uh, I, I I do have clients that occasionally mention I get some bruises, some scratches, some physical representations in some way. But in terms of like literally being physically attacked, that's also something that I just don't see or experience. I hear a little bit about it, but if, and we do work with different energies in a way, but if you're also in that, in that way, that's interesting. Uh, and so that's a little bit of another fact or fiction. So if you're thinking, well, you know, they, these guys just said entities are a fact. So I'm not worried now about getting physically attacked. Well, that they're real, but they're not real in that sense. And then I think it's a great point. So for me that, and the movie does actually do a nice job of illustrating that where there's a scene in the kitchen where Angie, the girl, uh, uh, says uh, she punches and, and attacks this guy. 
but it's the entity whispers in her ear and says, attack him. The yeah. entity doesn't l raise the guy up himself, but it influences her to do it. And there's a big yeah. difference. Yeah, there is. And I think that's really the key to people feeling safe in those situations. And, and in the end, it comes down to your ability to control those thoughts and the, 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 the speaking, the head, you know, talking to yourself about, you know, because you all of a sudden you get that feeling, you get that 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 horrible feeling, that that dreadful feeling of pure dread in your in your solar plexus, and uh, that that you're done because you've created a physical manifestation of the fear, and you've just gone in join me in this fear, and it just yeah. gets worse and worse. But you've got to pull yourself up. They still can't in ninety nine point nine percent cases or more. Uh, they cannot harm you unless you yeah. allow them to harm you. Yeah, and that, but they will claim powers that they don't have, and so oh, that's lies. Part, exactly. Lies. So that's part, so they'll tell you that they and threaten you with something and and claim powers that they don't have, and so that part of it is saying like, I know what you know, I know, uh, I I understand reality clearer, and so when you tell me that, I know I'm not going to be fooled or tricked by that. Yep, 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 exactly yeah. right. And so and so so it's like uh, and so there can be a tendency we give. Too, so we don't want to discredit them completely and say they don't exist because they can in a way, but we don't want to give them too much credit and power, therefore, and we don't want to diminish our own power. And so that's, a, that's actually another thing. So you know, do entities really exist in the way shown in the movie? Uh, it gets, that's where some cinematic license certainly comes in. But then do you work with entities in the way shown in the movie? So you said they did pick up some of your scripts. And so that is something you know, it's repeated and it's quite interesting. So your technique. Uh, it's there, there's that repeated question, whose body is this? Yep. Getting permission to release and yep. asserting sovereignty of their body and not giving and denying permission of the entity to be there. So is that is that pretty much the the technique in a nutshell? Was that represented it accurately? It is very that that part of it is is what was quite accurate. John Jarrett actually who played me. He kind of wasn't into it at all. He kind of he kind of lost his way a little bit as an actor. Um, I just thought he did a good job, but he just he wasn't into it. And yeah. I think that that he lost that transitional part of as an actor into really showing what it might do and what how he might really feel about it. But he, he did a good job. He did a good job. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, do you mean a little bit like actually even in watching the, the the parts of you at the end, you do look a little bit more possessed yourself as you're doing it. That's and, what it is. That's, that's, and the, that's the, the, the actor seemed a little bit more removed or I'm still a guy doing it. Well, I actually tried to talk to him about it before we shot the movie and right. uh, he said, oh, I know, I don't need, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, I don't believe in that shit anyway. So that's, that's okay. where it's. That's where it ended. So the, yeah. the the job that he did on the movie was was what his his what well, was his interpretation. It's also an actor's job to interpret the script as well. Yeah. So uh, between it's between the actor and not 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 at the, it's not up to the guy who it happened to. Yeah. It's up to the director and the actor to interpret it and work out what's best for the audience. So yeah. in, in that answer to your question, that's where it kind of went. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, so that but the, the the overall process is still much the same, and so then actually another couple of things that are really uh, evident in the movie, which is you know do you really take entities out of them but into you? Yes, yes, correct. Okay. I think the only thing was really freaked me out was he was doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't you, do that. you don't. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. But my okay. my motion is more of a. Um, like the pranic heel I used to do, it was kind of like this, okay. and I can feel it even when I do it. I can feel it in my own hand. I can feel the energy. I'm yeah. not saying that I've got any any power or anything. It's just just something that could well be a synapsis thing. It could be a mind thing that says, "Well, this is what's going to work." And I and we've yeah. talked about this. I mean, it quite often you you we all have this power. This is my yeah. version of it. Right. Yeah, well, like that is actually in uh, hypnotherapy or NLP, that is actually a technique where people might say, I've got this churning, bad, tough feeling of anger and worry in my stomach and their hands will be spinning around. And I don't know how, how to deal with it, but somehow I just, I don't know what to do with it. But, you know, somehow yeah. I end up feeling better. And I go, yeah, do you yeah, notice yeah. what you're doing with your hands? And they go, what? I didn't use my hands. So I go, yeah, no, you were doing this when I was feeling bad, trying to get rid of it and bringing in a good, something else uh, to clean and cleanse it. So, yes. yeah, so that, that. Well, that's that, that proof in point is that everybody has the power to do the same thing. Yeah. So with or without spirit releasement, people do that as a way of just working with energy. So you can be doing this without entities. 
but yes. it makes sense to me that you'd be doing that in relation to entities. Same like, process. Still... Look, uh, disease and uh, uh, entity attraction, um, I think, is all blocked energy. Uh, and blocked energy can be created by your thoughts. Yeah, you, you, you have this stress and it's going on. It's an unresolved issue. You're constantly yeah. stressing about it. So you're constantly trapping that energy into that blocked position. That energy becomes, in my opinion, and probably a few other um, people who do this stuff, that is what attracts this vibration from other entities to come to that place where they can basically, it's like you're sitting for you and me to sit next to each other and talk the stuff that we we know and understand and like each other. We'll we'll chat about it and we'll enjoy each other's company. I think entities are like that with energy, bad energy, is they come in there, they want to be a part of it. And they go, oh, I want to feed on this for a while. And then they join the body. And if you drink too much alcohol, take too many drugs, or even, even unconscious or even sometimes meditating, you can open that little door where you are, no longer holding that that stuff tight as part of your system you've just let it go but it's there right and they go oh hello got a place to feed here and they come in and stay that's exactly right do a ouija board or something crazy like that shit because you've just gone hey come on down yeah. come on take a seat in my table you know that's yeah that's, that's, well, that's, that, that's exactly right and that's how entities get into therapeutic work so I'm yep. sitting there wanting to go into what are the fears, worries, anxieties, doubts, and people can have those things churning around. And you're right, you know, that, that can that can happen with nothing to do with entities, but entities do spot it and grab yep. onto it and connect yep. with it, as you said. So that's sort of where where entities become therapeutic because people are dealing with these kind of therapeutic issues and emotions yes. can then get fed on by entities. Yep. Uh, it is pretty rare and et cetera, but you know, that so there is there's a real connect with a therapeutic world that I do meet a number of people who uh, for one reason or another do take them into you. So is there a thought process behind that? You know, like, how do you feel about taking them into you? Well, it was, it was a, it was a better best of two worlds. I started doing this work a long time ago. Yeah. The first person I did it to, it, it, it helped them immensely. And yeah. then it becomes this thing. Well, this, then, then, it becomes this thing where I see this person with it, they've got this burden on them and I go and take it off them as best I can. Um, mm. And they feel better. And I go, well, yeah. shit, how can I not do that every time I come across someone that's got this problem? So at the end of the day, it's, and surprisingly, there's only been a few people out of the thousand odd people that I've actually done this with. There's only been, a, there's only been a few that have actually got a fright from what, what's been going on. Cause I usually say at the beginning, they look, there's some weird shit's going to come out of my mouth and I'm probably going to call you names and myself names and I may even hit myself. You know, they go, oh, my shit. You know, but nine times out of ten, they're, they're quite they're quite good with it because they feel better. It's like the burden's gone from them, went to me, and then they don't care from that point. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, and and it, it, has a physical, it has a physical burden on me. It's part of the reason you do it is because, like, that is your process. That's what works. And have you thought of, you know, have you thought of not taking them into yourself and yeah, not having no, that burden or is that just how it works for you? Well, it's one of the things I wanted to investigate, really. I wanted to get into and I wanted to sort of kind of, you know, hopefully doing a few podcasts and getting people ringing up and going, well, who's this nut job? You know, and there's people when they commented on the movie that, you know, I'm a wanker and I'm a, you know, and I'm a fraud and I'm all this sort of shit. I don't really care about that stuff because at the end of the day, I'm, I don't charge anyone for this stuff and I, I'm not hurting anybody. Um, because you know, 99, 90, I'd say ninety five percent of the people I work on get a better, they feel better. Yeah. So that's that's my answer to it all, right? Yeah. That's it. I don't care what anyone else says about why it happens. Going through me, it's just what I've got now. And if it, if I could fix that and I want to change that, um, yeah. I'd love to. I would love to stop doing it that way. But it's the fastest way possible that I know yeah. to clean somebody up. Yeah. See, I mean, one of the reasons I ask is, you know, I, I don't do that myself and I do meet people who do that. And they'll often even come for a spirit releasement therapy training because they say I am taking them through me and it's just creating a real cost on me. I'm just so exhausted. It's really affecting me negatively in so many areas of life. So I'd like to do it in another way. And so, but, but one of the points is, you know, we really are, uh, I'm auditory, you're kinesthetic in the approach and you work with a lot of people that I can't or wouldn't work with. So part of my feeling is, you know, the reason you do it like that is because if, you know, that is what works and there are other ways of doing it, but you couldn't really do that with those people. And, yes. and then the other question is, you know, and so I would, I don't recommend people to do it, but I'm teaching really quite a different thing. And, and the way you're yep. doing it is, is its own thing. And so they don't make sense in that context. 
But then the other question is, you know, what negative side effects does it have for you? Because I do meet a lot of people who've maybe done that five or 10 times and they're like, I can't do that anymore in my life. I'm having, I'm getting nightmares. I'm having all of the, you know, I've solved their problem, but now I've got a lot of problems, which I need, I need you to help solve. And yeah. I, cause I can't, because you're here releasing them back into the ground. But a lot of people who take them onto themselves can't then heal themselves and they end up having a lot of really significant problems. And, and they, there's, they don't get any, the fact that you've been able to do a thousand in that way shows that it hasn't damaged you too much um, that you've been able to continue to do it. You know uh, what I mean? to, to be honest with you, if you've got the idea and have the understanding that, that this is, this is, this is the body I'm carrying around right now. Yeah. Um, and, and that if, if, if it does kill me, like I have cancer now and I got some other bloody bug at the moment from I got from the hospital, some super bug. Um, at the end of the day, if it kills me um, on my journey to to learning this thing and maybe I teach some people that, that there is a better way to do it and through my example that this is not the way to do it, then, then my purpose was to take it a certain pathway with what I have in terms of what, what, what it does to me and why it does it to me. If I can teach other people that they to not be afraid and to live in love right if i get that out before i before i cark it from whatever this yeah. work is to me then then my, my life has been worth living all the horror of, of a, a, a complex trauma child and a, an unchecked adhd through my whole life it's like i've had a lot of things and it's been a very hard life in many many ways um this bit of it is though i'm i'm unwell it, it's not the worst part of my life at the end of the day being under having understanding of what certain things mean and where we go and what we, we, we and how we get there and where we end up, perhaps, um, that's very close to understanding all that, being very conscious of those things. If that's a purpose of a human being to go through that to get to that, well, it's okay yeah. to be, it's a, to have a method that's hurting me, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, makes well, sense. I think, yeah, it does. I got two things. One is, you know, there's mental and physical health. And so the fact that after a thousand times, you, you know, for most people would do it five or 10 times and be sent fairly crazy and have yeah. and end up with some sort of psycho psychotic breakdown. I mean, people like Frederick Nietzsche, who just think too deeply about life, go a bit crazy, you know? And so, yeah, and the that fact that you... Be, yeah, but that could also be, what? that could also be any entity involvement as well too, or maybe consciousness is where you go, well, you look at it and you consciously go, well, this is what the world is. You go, oh shit, I don't, that's just, yeah. what the hell am I doing here? You know? And you look yeah. at everything and you go, oh, you want to start understanding the stupidest thing. I understand some of the stuff in politics and why they do things. And because and because of entities and a lot of other things like this understanding. And I go, yeah. why the hell do they do that? That's the stuff that drives me crazy on your pathway to consciousness is realization of the the, the stupidity of what's the planet, of what humans have been doing for the last oh, yeah. couple of thousand, few thousand years. Right. So for me, that's, you know, well, like, like, so mentally, I mean, the fact that doing this kind of work hasn't driven you crazy and it, and it can and I didn't does say that. to some. I didn't <laughs> okay. say that. I, uh, I did go to a doctor and get a certificate. It's on my wall. I show everyone who comes over. I'm, <laughs> but there's I'm saying, wrong with this me. dude. I know. I, he looks as crazy, but he's not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And well, then the other thing is you did mention health. So you actually have recently got a cancer diagnosis, but yes, you've, been doing, you've, you've been doing this for 15 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're at a certain, uh, we're all at a certain age, cancer happens, you attribute and, and an entity did pop up and say, you know, you're going to die. Yes, uh, that's right. I say entity, but I, look to me, I was, I was walking into a public toilet in a shopping center and mm. there was two guys at the toilet. So, then, you know, you're looking at the visual thing. The next minute, this loud voice came through and went, you're going to die. And I went, and at least dead said, I jumped like it was, it scared me so much. It was like, it was mortifying. And it was then, and then I started getting the, the the results in terms of because I had a high rate. My PSA was going up just a little bit, and then everything just went boom, and my health just went kind of down the toilet really fast. And but there's two factors to that. One, it could be just be the dormant cancer going getting into it because I was in a very stressful executive job at the time, yeah. and going through a, quite a difficult stage. And so there's that aspect of it, but there's also the aspect of that my mind took that on, that I went, oh, shit, it's done. I'm finished. Okay. How can I argue with that stuff? The, the, the voice has come through, you know, I'm going to die. So, But that's been, you, you look, history is full of those moments where human beings were actually told a certain thing. They saw the burning bush. I mean, who knows those things that happen? Because they are 
remembering that we are very powerful beings in our own right and we can create the world that we live in and we have. We, yeah. we have. This is what we got for our money right now. Um, and I could be doing that for myself. And it could well be an entity that does, yeah. that's helping with that because I I take on, look, if you do a 1,000 people, let me tell you, there's still a 100 phone calls and emails and stuff from people going, oh, i got a friend and it's like, or, you know, and, and there's people that are verging on the, the edge of mental health which makes this, the entity the entity, entity incursion a little easier. So I get rid of that. And then because they've got mental health, the entities can come back months later when they start doing the same crap they were doing before, drinking alcohol and taking drugs. Um, and, and I have to go back into that process again. Um, you, your own mental health and your own stress levels, because it's a constant barrage of please help me. Yeah. And and it, take, it does. It takes your energy away because these people are thinking about you all the yeah. time. So they're so, they're incur, incur, they're making incursions on my energy because they're thinking about me. That's what a curse yeah. is. It's the yeah. same principle, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So it comes at a cost. It's tiring. It takes your energy. But uh, people might say, "Oh, you know, you can't do this kind of work because if you take it into the body, then it's going to give you cancer, and there's a clear cause and effect, and that's what happened to Mark." But that that's really not that clear. Uh, there's no. no it's not and, that clear, and it's not that definite. But exactly. it's a bit of something I want if I do, if the cancer does get me, it's certainly something I want to find out about very, as quick as I can. Yeah. And not, you know, I don't want to die of cancer. I don't want to. But if it does, it happens. I, there's nothing I can do about it. What, what I'd like to do is at least find out if it was so that somebody else doesn't do that to themselves. If I've done this to myself, then yeah. I won't warn people about this because this is what can happen if you do that. Right. Yeah. That's right. And there can even be elements of deception. Like if, uh, if an entity screams, you know, you're going to die and it knows you've got cancer and it, but then which it didn't give you, but it can trick you or, or claim right. powers that it doesn't exactly. have by saying, you know, this is your punishment for doing this, you know, Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and go and tell everybody not to go and help people spiritually because all the dark forces will give them cancer, which is bullshit. Yeah. Or there, there isn't evidence of it anyway. There's no evidence of it, and I doubt that it's the case. I think the physiological aspect of it, it comes from the human's mind, yeah. right? And the cause and effect of that. I mean, the voice itself, I, I don't that, that I don't believe that was me. I think that was some – when you do a few poltergeists, which I have done, which is the really so strong um, manifestations that, that sort of incur into the matter, energy, space, and time world, mm. they can make shit like that happen. Right. And and the threats that I get so in some cases when I'm on these and if there's beings, uh, entities in there feeding and I'm sort of taking them away from their food and going, now piss off and find something else. Yeah. Uh, they're not happy. So I'm yeah. sure I'm a target somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's good. I mean, so another point is, you know, like, are we fraudulent? And and like for me, you know, we we admit we know what we don't know, but we're saying anecdotally, this is what it appears. But we're also not saying, Oh, you know, modern science is nonsense. Uh, it, cancer is caused by entities. We're, we're not saying any of that. In fact, even even if we have the, these things, we're say, yeah, we're saying you know we we still don't have evidence for that. And um, and it's interesting you mentioned that the threats. And so this is one thing that can happen. You know, you're gonna they, they can threaten claim techniques. So uh, you know what kind of so when they said that, you know, you uh, what kind of response do you have in your own mind? When, when they when they make those kind of claims or threats, oh, that one hit me. That one hit me pretty hard. That one on the you're going to die. That because that was kind of off. I get it when I'm doing a, a, a clearing on somebody and I'm, I'm exercising something from somebody and they've come through me, and yeah. they're looking, they're telling me that you know go fuck yourself and all sorts of things. They're telling me those things. I'm telling me those things. It looks kind of weird, but it's it's how it works out. But yeah. having something external go, you're going to die. Uh, that that's that's. And you meet a lot of them, you know, there's there's this, there's things called tricksters, yeah. you know, and, and it's written, even written in the Bible about the demon, the devil's a liar, you know, the, 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 for what of terminology they, I can hear it. You can hear it in your head. And and if you haven't sort of really looked at this stuff before, you can be, you could have entities on you and they're going in your ear, right? You've got guides going over here. And so, you know, that old thing with the devil on one side and the angel on the other, that's yeah. often quite inside your head. And, and at times, it can be an entity going, well, you know, it'll be a lot better if you just had a drink, you wouldn't feel so bad, you know, and there's all that sort of stuff. And 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 then it becomes a cycle, right? It just, you just keep you keep getting into that if you don't start recognising and going, well, try and listen to the positive side of things over here and we'll see if things change and shift, mm -hmm. right? So that's, to me, 
that is the potential of the human being be able to look at that side of the, the chart yeah yeah nice so it's it's interesting when i like those kind of threats so even as a as in the kind of work that i do a lot though i i see these kind of false claims these kind of threats and as you say they're deceivers but uh here's here's one way i sort of think about it is you know uh if they say we're going to die and it's like baba horror shock yeah yeah, yeah. and 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 you know part of the response can be you know you haven't frozen me in fear the part, part of the response can be yeah no shit yeah we're all gonna die people get cancer you i don't have proof that it's from you we're all gonna die guess what buddy i've meditated on impermanence i understand my death is certain and the time of yep. my death is uncertain that's the human condition i accept it and yep. but what i do know is that when i do leave the body i'll pass into the light and i'll continue on my spiritual awakening now now the entity that says it buddy the problem is not not death it's that you haven't died properly you're stuck yep. in a state worse than death you're in eons of unmiserable and unsuccessful servitude to the dark lord you're going around threatening mark and and mark we're not buying it we're not we're not shaken uh we will go ahead and do our work anyway so you're trying to scare me about death it's not really working and uh but you're you're doing that because you're trying to use fear on us and trying to deceive but the only reason you and thinking that we'll fall for it. But the fact is, you're only doing that because fear and deception works on you. You've yes. been deceived by whoever you think is your dark master. And I can help you to see the reality and have less fear. Then I'll start talking to them about the three deceptions. In the meantime, they were like, Oh, I was supposed to, you know, you're supposed to be shocked and on the back foot. But then you rebuttal and turn it around. And they're like, wait, what? And yeah. then they see a bit of a truth in it. And now you're off to the races and you flipped it on them. Does that yeah. make sense to you? Or? you no, know, it does. In fact, this, this is what you do. And this is one of the things that really intrigues me about the um, spirit releasement therapy is that there's a, it follows a line along, e even in the biblical world of things and, and other religions and Scientology. And the piece, they, all these guys have got some form of dealing with these entities, right? And, and, and yeah. nearly all of them say, well, except for, for, for Catholicism, it's more that then the Satan is there's, there's demons and there's, da, da, da. but down here there's all these other things going on that you might be able to work into, you know, turning turning their lives around. It's kind of like an analogy around human beings. You go down this dark path, you end up going to jail and you got to get out and you know, and you end up getting in with all these crooks and you keep doing that. And it's a funny game when you look at it. It's like it's the same principles. It's all the same stuff, you know. And you make the analogy around the human heart and a pump and the brain and a computer. And it's like, you know, all, all this stuff is kind of interconnected somehow, isn't it? Right? They say so all these bad guys can't be all bad guys. That's why I brought up the yin and yang before, because it's a kind of, there's a darkness and a light mix that we've got to get right. It's like a good fuel mix in a race car. If you get yeah. that mix right, you get optimum performance. And I think that's that's the human condition that we've got to work out. It, it, you and I, because that's what we do, is how to manage the darkness in that way that it's not, you know, and it, it's not all because I was doing that. I was going, get out of here, you know, like I'm, like I'm getting into them and carrying on. And now I'm sort of more of a look, you know, there's a, you know, with love, I send you into the light, you know, da, 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 and they, they reject it. So I'll stick the light up your ass, you know, and all that sort of stuff goes on and go, well, yeah, try it. You never know. Right. <laughs> so the conversation. That's quite quite all over the shop there and the work that you do is exactly the same you get in there and you oh you know you, 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 and i can't I won't say the word manipulate but you're kind of convincing uh these guys because they're not so what? bad maybe what? You know. exactly well they, they've been manipulated to thinking they're worse than they are so i'm just unmanipulating them to be back to your you know that you've got light at your core oh 100 and i think yeah. that's key to, to an individual looking after themselves is thinking those thoughts when they're going through that process yeah. Is it I just think they just put a great big ball of light there and just stop stop with the dark shit already, you know? Yeah. Like just 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 move into the light yourself, and they will follow or they'll piss off. Yeah, beautiful. So, like in terms of the techniques, so you've got those techniques: getting permission, asserting sovereignty. Do you get into just like and so in the movie, you don't really get into too many discussions, but it sounds like you do get into discussions these days with entities. Is that right? And oh, look, and, and to people, sometimes you can talk to people. And an entity is talking you through them. So your conversation, it's exactly what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Except just, I have the conversation. I go, well, when did this first happen? And when, you know, da, 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 and you start talking about things. And you can tell 
when you start to piss the entity off because the person starts to get a bit irritated, then you know, okay, well, let's let's do something about this. I don't believe that that's all you. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's get in there and, and have a go at that. And, and and you can talk them out of that, talk them out from that point. You can talk through it. You can take them physically. Uh, when you take them into you and you send them in, back into the ground, do you occasionally have ones that stick to you and like hang around for a day oh, or weeks and talk to you? Absolutely. And sometimes I've got to catch myself on that because it, what I've did is when I do, when I clear myself, I used to do a clearing and then I go, thank you. And yeah. then, you know, but now I go, is there anything hidden? Yeah. And is there anything that's tuned deeper and deeper and deeper? Is there anything hidden? And I do that with other people too now. I go, yeah. and very often, and it'll, my intuition will send me to a point, like automatically I'll go, you know, throat chakra, diaphragm, root chakra. And my, my, it's just a feeling. It's an intuition. I go, right, found you. And they go, whoa, when well, they come through again and they scream. Sometimes it's the same entity yeah. that I got rid of in, in the crown chakra. And it's gone down to the root chakra. It's just run up and down the electric system. And, yeah. and it's, and, and you got to keep, you got to be diligent to it and not tr- try not to distract yourself and move off because they go, oh, you know, and you just, and then they have their way and they just, just stay there. And, and it happens to me, all, it happens to me doing me because I get so many. Yeah. Uh, the problem with tuning into people is that they can tune back okay. inadvertently, all right, and they don't know they're doing it. So every process that I do, if I forget to go, please disconnect me from this yeah. being, blah, 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 I, I, the, 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 well, in the early days, I, I never did that. And I had things all over me. Right. <laughs> when I was living up the mountain, Mulaney on my own, it was just like, my God, it just be getting attacked constantly. And then I realized what I was doing is I was shutting the door after I'd opened it. And I think yeah, that's right. how I ended up with this problem or issue or, you know. Yeah, I mean, it is part of the, you know, part of what makes you good at what you do does leave it a little bit open. But, um, yeah, the fact that you're able to manage it. And well, that's the other thing. I mean, it's like if you do get something attached, it's not the end of the world. You know, no. you, can't, you, you can just deal with it, comes and goes. You figure it out. Oops, did this. And it's, you know, part of a learning process as well. You can sort of go, oh, when I was, Early on, I should have been doing this and that, but it's it's all part of the learning process. You come out, um, you know, uh, wiser and 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 un, and un uh, unable to be stopped. You know, you're patient and persistent, and uh, forgiving of yourself and everything that we do. And, and all healers have to do that as yes. they go along the the learning and development process of helping other people. So actually, well, like, well, let me ask. I do want to come back to some real specifics on the movie. So in the, in the movie, you've got a team of assistants. You've got your the nephew. So is that real? No, no, I, I'm a Pat Malone guy. It's all all by myself. It, I, that was that was more. I think the director was seeing it as uh, well, because what he used he used a lot of influencers as actors, yeah, or young influencers, and I think that was the target market for these guys. Um, the, the story is a very boring one. It's just me on my own, yeah. um, and a lot of patience. Uh, yeah. A lot of people that have they got the problem. Well, um, that that made that made sense. I was going to ask, or is this a device used to bring in a young cast? That was all it was, <laughs> and, so, and so it had nothing it. to do with me. Um, yeah. But is what it is again. But, so there's no nephew, no, 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 no apprentice. No, there you go, there you go. I wouldn't, well, that, wish, that what made... I on, I wouldn't wish what I do on anybody. I can yeah, tell yeah. you, not at all. <laughs> That, that make that makes sense to me. I, I that that was my is it fact or fiction? And if I wasn't talking to you, I'd go. I bet you anything, he does it alone. And that yeah, this is all right. that that was a cinematic bit. Okay, right. beautiful. So like at the start of the movie, I'll quote it. It says in two thousand one, Jacob lost his best friend in a car accident, which triggered a strange series of events that ultimately led to his ability to clear people of what he believed to be demonic possessions. So how much of that's true? Uh, like the, the, the a, a friend in the car crash. Best friend died, not in a car crash, but of um, horrific cancer. Okay. Uh, um, very painful. He wouldn't refuse to go to the hospital, and he died. Uh, and I was there, I had my hands on his chest. Um, he yeah. was a big, big hundred and probably 20 to 30 kilo muscly bloke. Yeah. And um, he probably was probably weighed in about 65 kilos when he passed. Wow. But he had tumors hanging out of him everywhere and just misdiagnosed bowel cancer. Okay. And, uh, oh. Did, did he did he have any entity issues that you knew of? Um, he was a he was a Scientologist. He was pretty pretty together kind of guy. 
Okay. And so Scientology, uh, they talk about going clear and clearing, and, and at certain stages they do acknowledge some sort of uh, no, he was a clear dimensions. He was a clear, and wow. I I um I looked at Scientology. I, I, could, I couldn't get into it because there was just again an organisation that the control yeah. was everything, and just some of the things that were going on there just a little bit, you know. But great technology. Yeah. It's really a science. It's not really a religion. Um, I think there's a lot of work with entities in that up much in the upper the higher levels of the of the of what they do. Okay. And I've never been involved with that stuff. But I, the few that I've met that are really really cool are really cool, and some of them are very powerful. Yeah. Um, I just don't like the structure, the org, that's all that sort of stuff, and being pressured to do things all the time. Okay. Um, there's okay. another story on that. But anyway. right. So, so, so he passed away, and is he then? Uh, he then became an earthbound spirit that attached to you. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Right. He was so, the, when so, I when I had the exorcism on me yeah. by the pranic healer. It was the first one that came through, and it was very strange because I could feel his muscles. I could feel this, you know, and I'm going, "Whoa!" It's I knew who it was. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what came through my mind. Is it's this? It's him. What the? Yeah. F- I didn't know the. the I don't know whether you kind of get the idea that you are completely out of the whack. You, you, you're inside this thing that's going on, but you're not in control of it. And that is the most frightening thing that I've ever experienced in my life. It was two and a half hours of screaming, like you know, stuff. Yeah. It was terrifying. Okay, yeah. So that's so yes. that that's still not a dark force entity. He, we don't have evidence that he had dark forces attached. So he got cancer and died of cancer because that's what happens. You don't need entities involved for that necessarily, but he did attach to you in some way, and that is part of what. Uh, and having that released from you as part of your a big part of your journey. And so, actually, we did talk about that on our, we've, uh, on our other on our other episode. So have a have a look uh, at that. Okay. Yep. And then I did want to ask you, uh, like specifically about the movie, which was uh, right at the at the beginning. Uh, the the wife looks like she was wanting to commit suicide. She cut her wrists, and uh, the the character in the movie is doing a a releasement of her, the wife. So how much of that's based on reality? Um, a lot of it's based on reality because it's very hard to be, uh, you know. Because I was completely had no idea what I was doing. I was bringing them home to her. Right. Um, so, and, so you are you're you're actually married, and yeah, and, yeah, she, yeah, and yeah. she actually had some entity attachment issues. Oh, look, she had some very bad entity attachments around the time that I was kind of learning what I was doing, and she she liked to drink too, which was we both did. Yeah. So we was kind of like I was doing this thing that was clearing entities because of this, that, and the other thing, and and I'm I was a big drinker, and she was a big drinker. You know what could go wrong? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So was that, was, uh, is that was that part of the learning process? You realize oh, once yeah, I start doing this yeah. work, I have I can't have to drink less. Or oh, look, look, at the end of the day, it's 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 imperative that you you understand that that's part of the problem, um, and then it adds to it and it creates more of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and for my wife, it was difficult because she didn't know what was going on at all, yeah. um, and we were in these terrible situations where she she'd be taken over, and um, and it was difficult for her. Um, yeah. to her credit she hung in and um we're, we're in a much 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 better place now because we can we we work through that and yeah it's, it's okay it's well in, yeah i mean in the movie as well you there is that discussion between the two characters you know is it really an entity maybe she's just got manic depression maybe i'm helping her with the manic depression and this is manifesting in this way so i, I said those things because they were the words that i said in the middle of all of this you know and i'm um, you know, she's like a magnet to the fucking things, you know, yeah. and that's what that was said. And that was, that was that was probably one of the real lines of mine that was there. I didn't didn't know, right? So this is the danger of messing around with this stuff. Yeah. And if anyone out there that wants to go on with this, that, and the other thing, be prepared yeah. to go through the journey of, of a difficult time yeah. um, in in learning this stuff. If you if you're serious about it, um, I didn't. I tried to talk to other people, but I lived in a place where there was a fair bit of spirituality going on. But so many spiritual people that just have no idea. They found a bit of spirituality and they put their shingle up and they, you know, they, we can do this, that, and the other thing. And they, but, you know, go and learn your craft. You know, yeah. l- learn learn what you need to learn. And a lot of those lessons will be hard. The dark night of the the soul is really a real thing. That's yeah. a scary experience, and you've got to. To, to, to understand light, you've got to understand darkness. And that's the yin-yang thing again. 
that resonates what you're saying there because I think it is essential for healers to have uh, a healing crisis, essentially, which isn't a whole lot of fun. Yep. Uh, and and mm -hmm. and just coincidentally, uh, that was my initiation was really uh, as a witness to uh, a girlfriend's issues as well. I yep. my I literally got into this or was made aware of it, and you know had all of the scientific rational explanations in my head. But then when my girlfriend started channeling spontaneously in a hypnotic state and speaking to me uh, in a, as in the voice of her spirit guide, I was, what is going on here? And yeah. then I got the chills and the kinesthetic feeling of what universe am I in? And then yeah. the voices that she was using went from wise spirit guides to, uh, to darker entities, which ended up coming in and affecting her daily life and infecting it. And she yeah. ended up having to fly home. Uh, and to get treatment from uh, you know, conventional society, including her father was a psychiatrist. And it, it is funny as well that, you know, we are kind of a witness to it, uh, but it's then something that we want to be able to figure out. We want to help that person in the moment, but we can't because we don't know much about it. But then yep. we go ahead and we just keep going and, and, and we're able to help other people. In fact, it's actually relatively rare that, that you are actually being able to stay, uh, stay together and be able to help her in the end. Because yeah. oftentimes, often healers, you know, it's, I wish I could heal, heal, you know, my mom died of cancer. I became uh, a radiologist because I wanted to help people in that situation. I could never help my mom or my girlfriend, but I could learn to help a thousand other people. So the fact you've actually been able to help that, stay and help with that person is, is, is amazing. Well, it's been a learning curve for both of us. At the end of the day, I think that's the human condition is that we do pass through relationships and we do pass through lives. So one relationship is only a very small part of a very large thing in that, in terms of that, if you can get an understanding as a regressionist yourself, you understand that there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes through that yeah. um, and, and focusing on that. And we all do because when a heart's broken, we go, oh, fuck. you know, it's very hard to see anything else and look outside that problem. Um, yeah. But it's, it's a real thing that, that, that you've just got to go, well, okay. Um, I'm going to get past this and I'm going to move through this. And, and then when I'm finished, I'm going to, have another go at this and see if I can get it right. You know, all those questions are out there, but at the end of the day, um, it's a learning curve, the whole process. Even talking about having discussions with entities and flipping things around on them, you download uh, information in split seconds psychically about what's going on, including things in their past and their past life. So like, how do you utilize that information? Do you like mention it to them? Like, yeah, you look, know, I, I, I do. I, I, I and you've got to be careful because you don't want to auto suggest somebody in that yes. state. Um, you know, because I don't use hypnosis on these people. I, there's a couple of times where I did when there was a deeper cause um, going on. I wanted to find, I wanted them to discover the idea. Like I said yeah. in, in that interview, I'm, I'm the allopathic version of you. I, I do the, the quick chopper or something that's going to kill them overall, yeah. um, where you actually do the the, the, the the therapeutic pathway out through there. And the understanding comes from that. Right. Yeah. I'm just going to go, go on. Good. Go home and you know, look after yeah. yourself. If so, if you get a download where you realize, oh, there was a childhood trauma and particularly yeah. like that's where the entity first attached. So often, yes. you know, when I'm doing regression, I'm wanting to regress them to a first time they experienced it. Yes. So for example, it might be, you know, uh, you you felt I'm unlovable because I was abused at that time as a child, or I, in a past life, I died of loneliness and part of that loneliness is what's caused me to reach out to occult practices, to entities. And part of me wants to release them, but part of me is lonely. So in a split second, you could say, uh, I understand that you've got issues with loneliness, but uh, you can uh, let go of that desire to grasp onto things to cure loneliness that actually make it worse, that kind of thing. And so do you, you do little things like that? So it's a, it'd be a very quick version. But, you know, of, of where you, you plug I, into I often, a root I cause and undo it. I don't get the chance for that. Sometimes if it's really traumatic, it comes up very strong. Okay. Um, I don't, I, intuitively, it, it depends on how how I approach it myself. If I go in there and yeah. I go, and all of a sudden I see something really blatant, like a, sometimes I come across a, a child that's a, a woman that's been molested as a child or a man has been molested, molested as a child. It yeah. comes through very strong. And I said, well, you know, what, what happened to you when you were around about three or four? Or did you, you know, was there anything in the incidents in your life? And usually we get down to a molestation and yeah. that can, can eat at the core of a child and do all sorts of things. You know, you can get into disconnection from parents and 
you know, get into why those things are. And there's so many, so much of that from particularly kids from that 50s to 70s era where, the, you know, you, you've seen and not heard. Um, there are a lot of those traumatic PTSD moments in there where they're stuck. That's for an analyst to deal with, right? Because I don't, I don't really, I, I understand it. I actually, I can smell it. I can really feel that that's the case, but I, I don't do the hours of therapy. I go, well, I, you've picked up an entity and perhaps the entity is attached to this. And sometimes I get where uh, there's one lady that had been molested by her father and I went, okay, well, and then I got this sense of let's go and have a look at his father's father and, and all this what happened is visual, physical thing of the of a black cord attaching itself to all these beings along the way. Yeah. So there was a whole pile of pedophilia coming down the line. I was like, let's break that and disconnect that. And I wave my hands around. I got to throw that out there. And I can I disconnect all that from you now. You are, you know. And those moments can be very profound for those people. But I don't, I don't analyze it because I can't. I can't analyze it. It would take me forever because I've actually thought about it. It's my thoughts. It's not the actual intuitive thought. You, know, you understand what I mean? If I actually thought about the process of therapy, I yeah. wouldn't be able to go, well, I see this thing and it's got to go and let's get rid of it. Bang. Whether it's, if I go, well, that could be something that happened because, and you now think like this and you you did that, but yeah. what was school like, you know, did we able to connect the people at school and do you have any friends and do you drink alcohol alone or with somebody? Do you feel lonely in a group of people? And, and you end up going around, 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 around. And it's, ther- it's important therapy. That's the yeah. job for a psychologist, right? Yeah. Or an, uh, you know, you know, a regression therapist. Or, you know, my job is to go, well, I feel this. I think it's true because it feels true. It's come straight through right now. Let's deal with that. Let's cut that out. Let's get rid of that. And move on. Well, that that's great to hear. And I think that's, uh, that's really good ethical practice because, you know, there are psych- people who get psychic knowledge and, uh, and then, you know, we'll go ahead and tell people, you know, this is what it is. And then it's dangerous. I think it's dangerous, Mark, because you end up giving that person something that might not be true. And you're telling them, well, look, you got this because of this and that and the other thing. And they go home and they go, and all of a sudden they're creating this whole world that that around that little thing becomes their story. And then they create inbound uh, results from that because of the energy they put into it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it could be, uh, the psychic may not be right all the time, in which case you're giving people some pretty horrific suggestions, which can be, you know, just really terrible, or very unethical. Even if they are right, why bring it up? You they didn't come. To. They didn't. They didn't come in there looking for it. And if you can deal with it indirectly in another way, that's great. Even when I do regression therapy, the amount of times, you know, the percentage of people who've had some sort of physical or sexual abuse is very high. The yep. amount of times that they regress to those moments in me is actually quite low. So yes. it's there, but we just don't have to get into it. Hundred percent. And, and and I'm not telling them. I'm still bringing out their own inner wisdom and having their subconscious, their wise subconscious, take them to relevant events that they need to learn from. And yep. oftentimes it isn't that. Uh, yep. But you're able. But we can still get into some cause and do it in a in a way which gets them the result anyway. So you don't have to uh, dig out every uh, last. Uh, sad or difficult detail of their life in order to do regression therapy or to do it in your way. And I think it's great that you don't. And I, and I, and the, there are probably people who do uh, get into it a bit more than they should. And I think it's a great message for you as well, which is, you know, uh, just get it done in the, in the, in the most efficient and ethical way you can, which is, you know, it's very interesting and good to hear. Well, I don't overthink it. That's the, I think that's the key to it is I don't, I don't, for me, it's not, this didn't happen to me because I thought about doing it. It happened to me, and I'm now trying to work through what's best method for me and for somebody else um, without hurting anybody. And I think your words, because your words are powerful, yeah. right? Things that you say are powerful. You're asking your clients questions, yeah. right? They're answering. They're they're actually answering the questions, and you're pulling them through that process. And like yeah. everyone should go and get themselves a good psychologist, but you know yeah. you got to, and but you've got to find a good one, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the psychologist is there to go well. You know, the, the, tell me about your father. You know, tell me about your mother, and then then you just bleed those questions through, and you can find that trauma, right? Because everyone's got some kind of childhood trauma, some worse than others. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the, 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 there's answers in all of that that stop you creating shitty things in your life because you're yeah. manifesting those thoughts subconsciously. They're bringing them consciously to you. You go, well, now I've seen it. Doesn't bother me anymore because it's there. That's what it was. Oh, great, let it go. 
right? Yeah. Me, I just go, well, you've been thinking about this shit so long. You've drawn in an entity. You've drunk too much piss. You're now taking drugs for this shit. You're on psych drugs or whatever that don't work for you. Now you've got me because you've got something on you because it's feeding on whatever you've brought into your world. So let's get rid of that sucker. Now, what are you going to do? Go and see a therapist, go for a walk, you know, externalize, start getting in present time and see how you go from there. I'd have no after, after service care. Right? Yeah. You know, I'd send them to you, you know, I'd send them to a good therapist and, you know, because mental health can be a big part of it, Mark. Yeah, well, that's great. And so it's also, you're not saying, look, I don't believe psychiatry. It's all rubbish. Here's the real truth. You've got to, you've got to do it my way and, and don't waste your time with that stuff. It's kind of, it, and a lot of what we, well, why I see what I do is it's a complementary therapy, complementary yes. to conventional right. medicine and psychology and let them uh, do the, you know, do a lot of their job as theirs. Yes, I agree. I yeah, agree. great. And and so I just want to come back to just some specifics on the, the movie and I'll, uh, I'll have another follow-up question, but First, so like you've got the a couple of examples. You've got a kleptomaniac, so <laughs> you're not you're not there doing you know uh, helping her go through uh, abundance issues and were you poor as a kid or anything. But she just she's a rich woman that, that, who is compelled was, to steal. Yeah, that 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 particular one was the director's input. Okay, um, the sex demon was. Um, that was my on, uh, sorry, sorry, that was my sorry. Sorry, that's my next question. So, so the kleptomaniac no, one is is, 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 is f- fiction, but so then the next one that 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 was presented as your first clearing. So, there's a good-looking girl, but then as she goes through it, she has big makeup effects, bone distortions. At the end of it, she ends up looking normal, uh, and it turns out to be a demon of lust in her, and she's lustfully, uh, you know, responding to the process. So, was that one a real one? Well, ba- no, based not, on. It, it was. It was based on a story that that, that I told about a, a lady that I did a clearing on that was just probably one of the most difficult ones I've ever done, okay. um, where there, there was some sexual energy transferred to me the yeah. following day and then the day after that, and it was, just, it was quite, it was very strong. And, and my wife and I experienced some of that stuff that was um, mind-boggling stuff. Yeah. Um, but... Because the the root chakra is, you know, that that thri- that drive to to perpetuate the species is a very strong energetic part of the human beings, and it's it's quite a place that can can hold these things, that yeah. like the sexual energy, and, and there's a there's a whole. That's why you see a lot of the ancient paintings where the there was naked women and naked men all having thriving all over each other, all that sort of stuff, because that is part of the human condition. It's part of our hormonal functionality but it's got to be connected to a spiritual part of your body as well because it's it's a driving force for you physically yeah. but it requires quite a bit of energy yeah. creation right? it's a creative force in your body yeah. uh, and, and and the indian uh indians talk about it with the karma sutra and all that sort of stuff um and it's big stuff focusing yeah. energy in that in that yeah but right. that's what? where that story came from it wasn't about some pretty girl on a yeah i mean and all just i mean the key thing is like and so in reality and it was also that part where you know a big demon came out and you know you ended up well the character grabbed the throat of the person but the woman could see firstly she'd gone from a horrific when she was being uh released uh, and cleared but then at the end of it she was fine so there is no real physical damage to people as they're going through this you know they may contort their face but in terms of the makeup effects and their bones jutting out and everything, and it's all uh, you know cinematic I, fiction. I, well, what I've what I've got on a number of occasions, and it's quite disarming. Even the, yeah. the, there were times where uh, one guy that the the um, the Vatican had sent to a pranic healer who was the student of the the gentleman that that I worked with, yeah. and uh, he wasn't quite onto exorcisms at that stage. So he rang me and said, "Well, can you give me a hand with this thing?" And it was a, it was a guy with a beard, and he came he came from overseas. It turns out he was a Viking, all this sort of stuff. Okay. But the whole process inside that his eyes were like flickering, and and the the entities were going like this. This this one main entity was coming between me and him, and me and him. That's happened to me a number of times, where they get in and they get out, and they get back in, they get back out because you know, the remembering that the individual has allowed it to be there at some stage, mm. right? And sometimes when they lose the entity. Because he's they're in then they're real. They go, oh, you know, they they come back. Oh, well, I can't live without this thing, right? Because it becomes part of their life if they've been there that long. But this thing was going like this, and his eyes were flickering. And I got to see it was the white of his eyes, and he was flickering like this. And then he looked up at me and he goes, "I see me in you." And I went, "Fuck, do you?" 
<laughs> it was one of my early ones. So I was like, what the fuck's going on here? But they can do this. Okay. Right. And they can react. And I, I suppose I'm a little bit more powerful now that I don't, they don't have to stay on them. They come to me, but they were going like that while I was trying to get strength stronger in what I was doing and more confident because I was mortified. Yeah. I was terrified. And, yeah. um, the prana healer in the room ran out because he was he was going like this too, and I was like, "Oh shit, what have I got here?" Yeah. But this yeah. guy was the real deal. He was really scary. Like, how did you learn this? Was it something you just spontaneously knew how to do, or did you find uh, in your early times that you went and then went on a mission and and read a bunch of books, talked to a lot of people, had some teachers? Did you? I'm a lazy it? reader. Um, I, I I did a hypno hypnotherapy. A guy, a guy from um, I think he was from Norway. Okay. He was fantastic, a lovely man, and he put me under. and uh, And I went into this bit. This character came through when he was doing ceremonial American Indian things, and he's and I've picked this bloody this um, uh, pyramid, Shungite pyramid, off the table, and I'm tapping myself, and all these entities were coming through, and I'm talking to them, and and he was so wrapped at the end of it. He's like, I've never seen this before. You're exercising yourself and they were all coming through, and it was like, it was fantastic, but I got an understanding. He gave me the actual, the uh, the pyramid, so I, I went, oh, this, this thing seems to work, so I've got tapping everyone on their chakras, and it was a bit funny, because I'm going clonk, 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 clonk on the head, on the throat, on the okay. diaphragm all the way down. And, uh, and it was, it seemed to make it more powerful. It seemed to make it more, seemed to come okay. through a lot more. But again, could it be my belief patterns that were going, well, that worked. In the end, I dropped yeah. the rock because I, you know, I was getting sued for head, you know, trauma. Not okay. really. But uh, in the end, I just started, I just got this feeling. And I remember old George doing this when he was healing me one time. And I went, and I did it. And I did it in my hand. I felt like I could feel the energy moving in my hand. And I went, here we go. Okay. Let's try this one. So but in the okay. end, it comes down to your belief in the version of what you do works. Okay. And that was like what we talked about the other day about faith to know. That's yeah, yeah. key. Okay. But you you've never had any uh formal training. You went to no, a hypno- no. you didn't have you weren't going to a hypnotherapy training. You were no, you no, went no, to a hypnotherapy no, no, no. session. Okay. I, and what I, about I, what, have, have you have you read any like have you read uh so for me as a spirit releasement therapist, my Bible or key text is William Baldwin's Spirit Releasement Therapy, a I've technical it. manual. I've, I've, I've read it, and that's how I met you, because it, to me, I started trying to understand it, right? And and when, yeah. I, when I got into it, it was, well, you, I, not that I was above it or further from it. It, was, it wasn't it was going to suit my methodology based on the, the, the instantaneous nature of it. I mean, well, okay, I, I get the understanding with it where the levels of the beings are now. Okay, I got that because it made sense to me because – Spirit release talks about the levels of the entities, right? And talks about, you know, earthbound beings and dark forced entities. And we're like, okay, got that, seen that, been there, beautiful. So what happens is I take out of every single thing. I've got I've taken a bit out of this and then a bit out of the out of the Quran, a bit out of the Bible, and a bit out of all these things yeah. that I think are all one thing anybody anyway. And I think once everyone, more people are conscious on the planet, they'll go, it's all the same stuff. Right. Right. Okay. So your thoughts on it just it was like, oh, that all just clicked with you. You're like, yeah, this is exactly what I've been experiencing, thinking, feeling. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and it and it's all feel for me. So that's the only way I could learn it. It's the only right. way I could learn it. So well, the more I read it, I went, great. I, if I get it resonates with me, it's all about frequency. I go, yep, got it, got it. That works for me. And then I and I'm constantly like a little radar going, well, what's the next thing I got to learn? I mean, I'd love yeah. to bring science to what we do. I'd love to. Bring, yeah. You know, have a you know have a research institute based on this stuff. Um, yeah. What the experiments we could do that we could find to be true and prove that there's no reason to be afraid. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, so uh, getting towards science, but uh, even you call yourself the accidental exorcist. So there's an implication of religion there because exorcism, to my understanding, is kind of a Catholic term in a way. Is certainly in modern, more modern times. Yeah. So what's your view on just even just the the word exorcism exorcism uh, and, clearing because yeah. because the actual right the book that i actually sent to or the script that i sent to um uh the film director was uh, um was actually called the clearing okay and right so well, so people call you the the exorcist but do you just call yourself a clearer and I, what, I go what, what it, it, again again it's like when you when you get into some of these clearings you end up with Let's say there's a, good, a lot of Catholicism involved in, in the process of exorcism because that's where the term comes from. 
Okay. So you use the name Archangels and you use the, the terminology Angels and you use the terminology because it has a frequency. Yeah. Right? Everything, a, every word has a vibration that you use, right? Yeah. Hate has a vibration, right? Yeah. Jealousy and those things have vibrations which create negative energy. Love and, and kindness have a, have a different vibration. So using the word terminology exorcism is only because people understand what that is because of Hollywood. Yeah. Right. And because right. of the, the, the bulk of the Western civilization and Catholicism. Right? right. So I use a term that people will understand that's just get rid of it. Because if you go too far, and I've, I'm finding when I've been involved in looking at the spiritual teachings of things, it gets too theory weedy and it gets too, oh, you, you say the word spiritual. Like, oh, okay. So you lose a lot of people that really want to get hardcore about understanding it properly. Yeah. So I'm going to exercise you. I'm going to get rid of that shit, right? So it's hardcore. It's like a punch in the yeah. face or a soft slap, gentle slap. So yeah. exorcism is a slap in the face, a real punch in the face, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what people get used to hearing. And I don't care what they call it. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. Yeah. What, I don't even like the term accidental exorcist anymore. It's kind of like that was, that was yeah. a couple of years ago. So. <laughs> the way that both of us do it. It's non-denominational. It's not attached to a particular religion, yep. and and the process is pretty, um, you know, pretty open. Uh, it, it doesn't, it, it isn't attached to a religion, a particular religion. And so, but you have worked with uh, religious people, and so it says in the movie, priests call him in for demonic possessions. So is that no, true? Have you, had, have you worked I've, with Catholics? I've I've worked with all sorts of different religions: the Baptist, okay. the Church of England, the Catholic Church, you name it. I, yeah. I've, I've talked these are guys that are doing the, the mormons uh yeah. there are a lot of people that are actually doing this work already um so for me it's kind of like they're having trouble getting it done because yeah. uh you know it, it is it, when you get a good one <laughs> unless you've been doing it for years um a lot the catholic church is probably the only religion that works in that space predominantly yeah, yeah. right uh, because the size of it and because of yeah. well actually what are your thoughts do you have what are your thoughts on are there people working in the catholic church now still or still as exorcists that you know about and what are your thoughts on their processes uh, or what they're up there's to? a whole well the catholic church released a press release a few years ago which said that the, that um exorcisms in in particularly in italy were up 10 percent okay and they were actually putting more people on to deal with the, the current influx of evil on planet earth um Myself personally, I've found that it has been a little bit, uh, a little bit busier over okay. the last couple of years, and um, which is interesting. Yeah. So another thing people could say, maybe looking to debunk it, uh, is that oh, this is all you know, suggestion given to them by their whatever religion it is, and no scientific person would go through this. They're just sort of experiencing what they've been told to experience. So, so next, so how many people would you say that you work with? have a religious background and how many of them are just pure scientists atheists and have no religious background or conditioning um i couldn't give you a specific percentage um but quite often there's a lot of the religious dogma that, that creates the problem but i've also okay. had a few friends that, that go out and and do things like the toad and and mushrooms and all sorts of weird and wonderful things and yeah. even a an, an indian lady a suit a um a guru that was that, that had a problem mainly because and her problem she said to me was that it happened to me while I was meditating because it would put you into an unconscious state which is again so it doesn't really matter where you come from these things are there for are there right yeah. you you can talk yourself into it if you've got some religious dogma going on but I've had scientists one particular scientist it was absolutely that I was a wanker and couldn't do shit, but he was the one that called me when he got one. Yeah. Right. He was, he'd done psychedelics too many times and he bought something through the last time he went in and he went, oh, I said, you didn't yeah. I think you'd probably tell that story. There, there you go. And so, so the, the key is, you know, you don't have to be a Catholic or a believer in any kind of religion with this, with demons or spirits as part of their tradition. So I would, I would say the majority of people that I work with, don't have any uh, religious preconditioning along these lines in any way. Yeah. You know, and, and well, it sounds like there's a, a fair bit of yours as well. Well, sometimes, well, that would be maybe because they can go to their priest and get this kind of work, right? But, but you, they go and that, well, people don't want to do that because they've got, they don't want to go to a priest. And there's, there's right. a whole 
there's a whole bunch of things that go on for that reason. But in the end of the day, it's yeah. like that story I told you about with the the grave full of skeletons. They're all different nationalities, but they all look the same. Yeah. yeah. So in, in the end, in my opinion, just my opinion, it's all the same thing. Yeah. Right. It doesn't That's matter right. who you pray to. God's God. Um, you can get help. You can get. You can. You can get help at any time, no matter who you are and what religion you're involved in. And you don't need to jump over any hoops. You don't need to, you know, you don't get any rewards for doing terrible things to other people. Any religion that, that promotes hate for any reason is wrong. Yeah. It's wrong because it's exactly. only love and fear. If you're promoting fear, you're of the darkness. If you're promoting love, you are of the light. Yeah. Yeah. There I is think, you know, between that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they, have, I mean, there's, they're not promote. Yeah. Sometimes you, you first have to acknowledge darkness. You're not, prom but then promote the light. So that, yeah. uh, oh, be in, be in yeah. the light. You yeah. know, acknowledge the darkness because it's part of the yin and yang. It's part of yeah. the whole system of, of where we're at. Yeah. Um, well, but you can live in that in the white side, or you live in the dark side. Yeah. You know? Speaking of speaking of promoting darkness, this is so we're now getting to the end of the movie. So uh, and so the and so spoiler alert for those that haven't watched it. And this is like a, a big a, a sort of the big scene to end the movie was that there's a pentagram in a house where a satanic ritual had been performed and a murder-suicide. So the people who did that ritual passed away. New owners went into the house. Yep. Entities possessed them. And then you go in and clear them. Uh, but then there's a, a, a kind of a conclusion, which is, oh, I accidentally uh, finished that ritual for them and brought some demon into the world, which was kind of a, I was like, wait, what? So so is this based on real events? Uh, no, what, how much of that? Zero. Right. Okay. Great. So, I, so I to have, me, to... I have, look, I have cleared. I have hit, hit, um, cleared houses where there were pent pentagrams, and I've, I've cleared houses where there are demonic influences, and, uh, and and some of them are really difficult to say the yeah. least. Um, but there was no horn thing that came up and said, "No, oh, you've you know, you've let me go." Yeah. Uh, no, nothing like that. And okay, look, beautiful. Again, that... creative license by directors and oh, writers. For sure. Like when, when, when I was watching this movie, I thought there are two things definite. He does not have a team of people, and that that whole end scene isn't uh literal. <laughs> you know, that that's made up and it almost looked like you know you're setting up uh, a big climax for the sequel. Oh, and no. uh I'm, and so, I wouldn't but, have ended it like that at all. But anyway, it's it's, it's I oh yeah, it's a movie, it's a horror movie, you know. That's a, it's a no, different it's a, thing. And so this is where this is where the cinematic fiction comes in. So well, I'm, the real, I'm, story, wanna, the just, real story is yeah. far more frightening. Oh god. <laughs> I, I was I was wanting to I was wanting to get us on a nice ending. But yeah, you know, no. so for me, so look for me, like so the film concluded for me on a bit of a note of well, that's a bit more horrifying and a bit unreal. Um, but uh like ultimately like what's the message from the movie and so to me it ended on that message and i was like oh this you know that the, the ending message seemed to me not not to really gel with reality and and so it seems but so well, a lot of horror movie, movies aren't i mean if you go to the pope's yeah. exorcist there's no reality in that either except for some of the things that actually happen and again like and you pointed out as a bit and cleverly so is that, that films are a visual art yeah. right and you can't you most of the stuff it happens in the privacy of your of your mind and there that you know, you're being attacked internally and voices from things inside you are attacking you and that's very hard to depict in a visual experience um you you you've got to, you're kind of moving into the paranormal you know the paranormal was a reasonable movie but they, even they had to they had to put the footprints on the flower kind of thing to yeah. to to actually show that there was actually something in the room um yeah. in reality it could be there um the bed could move and all that stuff could happen yeah. very hard to do visually yeah so actually so in, in part of that the re it was a big ending so they wanted you know we have a big bang the biggest baddest uh scariest thing like the boss you know like a, a boss fight at the end but yeah. uh and he just and in a lot of the sessions that you know there were a number of sessions depicted and they couldn't just like have another one and then end so it sort of made sense from a cinematic point of view. But, uh, you know, what should we learn from this? So, like, what have you learned from doing this? What would you tell people? What's a real message that we can get? And so maybe it didn't come from the movie, but from you. you know, for like me, the, uh, the real message is that, there's, that there is always a way out. Yeah, There is always a way to get to the light. There is always a way to find love. There is always, and the responsibility comes back to you as an individual for what you think and you feel and you and what you allow to be part of your life 
If you allow the darkness into your life and keep thinking about the shit that's going on in your, in your world, you're just creating a vibration that sends out to the universe or to God that goes, you have some more of that because you're thinking about it all the time. You must like that indiscriminately, mm-hmm. right? If you're given a gift of, of a field of potentiality, a godlike field of potentiality, what would you ask it for? Oh, my job's really hard. I don't like my wife. I drink too much. I do this and I do that. And that's what you talk about all day. Oh, Joan doesn't like being there. You're going blah, 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 sending out a frequency to the universe and going, well, give me more of that shit. Yeah. Right? I was going to say anything that was in, has now come was to start taking control of that. Do a journal every day. I used to do a journal every single morning. And I look back over three years of it and I found all this negative shit. And I'm going, what the? And I was getting all negative shit coming back in the story. Change the narrative. Yeah. What would you tell people who are interested in doing healing work? I'd say be careful. Um, Anybody who's done it like me has got into trouble. Um, Even uh, L. Ron Hubbard, the Scientology dude, I heard that he was doing stuff like what I was doing and he got a broken leg or something. That's the story I heard. Um, and, And it's quite possible when you start delving into this stuff. Understand the parameters and check your fear. You, you check your fear monitor. And you, how much fear can you take? And how much crap can you get said into your head that before you start believing it? And you've got to claim sovereignty over yourself first. You, yeah. you can't get out there and heal other people if you're like an open wound yourself. I learned that the hard way. You just can't do it, right? Yeah. Because you end up creating more wounds, and all your then it gets infected, and then you're really in trouble, right? Take charge of yourself. Believe in yourself, love yourself, start from that position. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that, that's great advice. So for me, just, you know, we're just starting off thinking about, you know, how much of this movie is fact or fiction. And I think just for me, and I'll just run this by you, tell me what you think. But uh, so I got a little bit of a speech here. Uh, but so I think, you know, for me, it's a fact that spiritual beings exist. Yep. Uh, most of those beings are light, but dark beings can be involved there in there as well. But I think some of the fiction can be exaggerating the power of the dark beings yep. and and, minim- and and underestimating the power of the light. I think the light's very powerful and the dark isn't as powerful uh, as, as we might think. And we have that agency and sovereignty and ability to choose and be of the light. And then then we're all fine. Uh, and so, but we don't want to pretend that dark spiritual energy, that energy doesn't exist and ignore it. We also don't want to be uh, afraid or horrified by it. And there are peaceful ways of getting beautiful therapeutic re- resolutions. So you now we can have a horror story, but in the end, it's a way of getting to a peace and spiritual awakening, helping and healing yourself and others, which is, that's the life that you've been able to live a- as an example. So at the end of the movie kind of made it look like, you know, some guy started doing a few exorcisms, did a few, and then at the end of it, it all went pear-shaped and and that was, you know, and, uh, and things went bad. But the fact is you've been able to stay sane uh, and, 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 uh, and, and help it relatively and help and heal a thousand people and you're and you're in good shape now uh and you know you did you did mention oh, this has aged me but uh you know if, if you're looking for evidence uh, in a cinematic view that you know you, you look like you're 90 but you're 50 i mean you know you, you look good and you've been able to come out of it with a lot of love and light you did actually mention to me that you think that the movies uh that movie the possessed has been rated pretty well in india and you're thinking yeah, of very well. Uh, it was um, eight to nine rating in, in India and and um, Bangladesh. Yeah, okay. So, well, I so, think because of the movie movie making style and they dubbed it. So <laughs> okay. Well, and you what you're th- <laughs> if you would and you did mention to me you're thinking of make, uh, making a movie, but it'd be like half horror to get people interested, but then the second half it'll be all love and light, which maybe I people wouldn't like a, it. But a, a progression of uh, yeah, well, look, that's, it's it's hard to get. Uh, you know, you've got to get some stats and some numbers on why that would work. Uh, and yeah. the script has to be, your script is everything. It's nine tenths of the law okay. and your lead actors, you know, it's, it's, it's a filmmaking. I learned the hard way is, is a science and it's like any business and yeah. people get carried away with the, with the ego on it all. And if you're trying to get a message across, you got to let the ego go. You got to look at what, what the crap, what, what the industry needs um, to make it work so that the people get something out of it. And then you've got to pick your forum. It'd be Gaia and your budget's relative to that. And there's all those things. But but you're right. And my, 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 my thinking is around getting through the darkness into the light and everybody wins. Yeah. Beautiful. So the, it's a happy ending to the movie that we can, we can stick on, which is in the end, 
uh, yeah, so that's great. And also, you did mention a dark night of the soul. And so it's just something I just want to address to the kind of people who watch my podcast a lot, who may be a hypnotherapist, past life therapist. Uh, and so just noticing, you know, what is all this entities they may be wondering. And, you know, people can have a dark night of the soul just in purely psychological terms, you know, so with or without entities, life can be pretty horrifying, but we can understand and accept that. And we deal with the traumas that come from that in a measured, reasonable way. And so people may say, no, I'm, I'm, I, I do pass life regression, that's fine, but I don't want to do spirit releasement or deal with dark entities because that's too extreme and scary. And there are ways to really break through that darkness with love and light. So I just say, don't be afraid to deal with it because horror movies are there to make us afraid. And that's kind of part of the fun of it. But yep. the actual reality is it isn't as scary and we're much more powerful. And it's also just because it's got a supernatural element, people sort of drop a bit of power because it's supernatural but there's so much horror <laughs> without, you know, uh, any supernatural or entity involvement in the human world. And we're cool with that and don't discredit it or say that it's not real or anything. And, uh, and, and we can deal with that. And how do you make the connections between you know, entities being horrific, but then we live in a pretty, a pretty traumatizing world with or without entities. Well, I think they, they, they kind of, they live together in the, in yeah. that, because the traumatizing world can create trauma in your own mind which can can again track the the entities again you're back to that center position of where what your sovereignty is can can alleviate those both sides of that in the end we're all going to die yeah well and, can i can i ask you mark this is one big question which is uh, some people who get deep into this say all evil in the world is due to spirits, demons, devils, and Satan. What's your position on that? I completely disagree. At the end of the day, I think, that, look, to me, the, the, the darkness is what it is. And I'll go back to the yin and yang. The, yeah. the, the ancient Asian cultures knew it. There was this, this evil's part of us, yeah. right? It's like the bacteria in your gut, right? That yeah. is, you got good bacteria and you got bad bacteria, right? The more you feed the bad bacteria, the, the worse the bad bacteria does to the rest of your biome and you get sick. Right, mm. it's the same in the energetic world. If you let too much of the dark energy entities have get too much power, it messes with your whole life. Right, mm. so the point is to balance it and get an understanding and understand the darkness. Don't blame it on everything, right? Because at the end of the day, you're just creating more of it because that's the that's the vibration you're putting out there. Mm. Hey, you know, damn the darkness, to hell with all that shit. You know, and all of a sudden you're focused in that way. That's why when you get somebody who's got something on them and they put and like me. When I first got cancer, it was like, oh, shit, I Googled everything. And I'm, like, I'm going to die in this amount of time. And, you know, and all that focus made me sicker and more afraid and more scared and created more problems for myself. In the end, I'm going to die or I'm not going to die. It doesn't really matter. Right? You're living this life. Just live it as best you can in that way of positivity and, and, and embrace it. Right? Don't give, Don't feed the darkness. Feed the light. Right. If you want more, the light darkness is not going to be there. It's going to go and sit in a stool and have a coffee and a smoke. Right. It's going to go. Okay. Well, I can't do anything. There's no work for me here. I, you know, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on overtime. I'm getting paid anyway, dude. So you go and work your ass off, light. Yeah. Same shit. Right. You don't have to participate in it. That's the point. That that's brilliant. And so a lot of people who get deep into this can start overly attributing power or influence to it. And I love the fact that you don't, and I also don't. Yeah. So we're really on the same page with that. And so it does. The individual personal responsibility to heal themselves psychologically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, on the light and the dark. So to me, it's really kind of a smallish part of the whole puzzle. Don't, don't, don't get too deep into it and, and make it everything. Yep. No. Yeah. Great. That's great. That's great. So yeah. So any. Uh, so actually, we uh, can people contact you? So you don't you know, on a website or socials. Uh, look, I haven't really got anything going because I'm. I'm... I yeah. do this, I don't charge anything for it, but it takes a lot of my time and yeah. much of my wife's displeasure. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's, just, it's uh, you're going to go and talk to demons again. It doesn't, you know, we got to pay our bills, you know, yeah. but she's right. You know, and that's yeah. only the only reason I entertained the idea of a movie was to go, oh, let's, let's try and earn some money, end up costing yeah. me money. So well, it's okay. one of those things. Um, but yeah, no, I, I look, I, I plan to do, so, uh, you know, get into more podcasts and get into some stuff. I mean, there might be might be a, a living in it for me, but I don't. For me, it's the, the individual that needs help will always get my help, no matter what. 
Yeah. Right? I think, so if yeah. they meant to find me, they'll find me because I'm not hard to find. <laughs> yeah. I'd also I would just uh, appreciate the work you've done. I think part of your work can be, uh, you know, educational. Uh, and, and, as are you. As are yeah. you. What you do. Yeah. You do good yeah. work. But yeah, thank you. And so any any last words, any last thoughts uh, and messages about, you know, what people can take away from this kind of conversation, this kind of topic? I think what people can take away is that it's okay. It's okay. Whatever you're doing in your life, it's okay. You know, just believe in yourself, take sovereignty over yourself and just know that everything's going to be okay. And, he, and, and God will deliver that okayness. That's great. So what, yeah, it's sometimes people can feel that I don't want to acknowledge some darkness that I have, or they're afraid that what if I find out I've got some sort of attachment. And even if you do have an attachment, then they can be terrified and horrified by, by that being part of a reality. They now have to somehow slot into their worldview. But then at the end of the day, I love what you said, because, you know, like, it's okay. So what yep. you do, but, and, and then what's the consequence of it? It's something that enables you to go into fear, goes into, I've got this bad, evil, dark force attached. But the way that you then overcome it is by, it forces you into such a, a, a paradigm of dark versus light that the only way to really go beyond it is to transcend it. And yep. then once you do that, you transcend the entire concept of good versus evil. And then, yep. you, then you connect to ultimate reality, which is infinite love and light. And it was part of like being pushed to see that got you out of the dualities and end up becoming something which is a really powerful way of spiritually awakening you. So even the you know some of the worst events and experiences you can have can end up being uh, some form of blessing. What do you think? And you embrace them for that. You said, I'm, I'm, I appreciate the lessons you're teaching me, and I love you for it. You know, and I, I send when I get re when I used to get really attacked, I just send them love. I love you. I love you. It's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's spraying. It's like pepper spray. You know, yeah. Love is like pepper spray for, for a dark, you know, a dark movement towards you. Just send it, it just puts a buffer there. And you go, okay, I see you there, yeah. but I'm just going to leave love, look after you, you know. Uh, and that's the way to go through your life in as best you can. Beautiful. Well, a wonderful ending to this podcast. And, uh, <laughs> and love uh, to talk we... to you, Mark. Really, that's really right. Yeah, thanks very much, Mark. Appreciate it. Take care, mate. Ciao, Cheers. ciao.